Well, I honestly didn't figure that as we turned the corner to year three for COVID, that I would be preaching to an empty church again, but thankfully this is for a short-term thing. Uh, hopefully you're all home, hopefully you all have power. We're recording this Saturday afternoon, so this storm that's coming through, maybe it'll be a time where we can sit in front of the wood stove and enjoy everybody's company. The only announcements I have are um, thank you for everyone who is here. Service is going to look a little different because I made up my own bulletin, but the lessons will still be in the one that's on the Facebook page if you'd like to follow along. And we'll begin with a time of confession. We gather as the people of God to offer our repentance and praise, to pray for the unity of the church and the renewal of our common life. Trusting in God's mercy and compassion, let us ask for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father, our Lord. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of pride and intolerance. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you pardon the sinner and welcome the repentant. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. May Almighty God grant us pardon and peace, strengthen us in faith, and make us witnesses to Christ's love. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, your Son Jesus prayed that his followers might be one. Make all Christians one with him as he is one with you, so that in peace and concord we may carry to the world the message of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading comes from Isaiah 62, 1 to 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out of the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings of your your glory, and you shall be called a new name. In the mouth of the Lord will give you will give. You shall you shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal kingdom of the hand of the Lord of the God. You shall not you shall no more be turned forsaken, and your life shall not be more than be turned desolate. But you shall be my delight. Is in her and her land Mary for the Lord delights in me in you and your land shall be married for as a young man marries a young woman so shall your daughter marry you and as the bridegroom <coughs> rejoices over the bride so shall your God rejoice over you and over the Lord. Thanks be to God. This way responds to from Psalm, Psalm 36. Your love, O Lord, reaches the, to the heavens and faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains. Your justice like the great deep. You save humankind and animals, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. How if all people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you as well is the well of life. In your lights we see the light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. A second one comes from 1 Corinthians 12 chapter. Now concerning a spiritual gift, brothers and sisters, I am not wanted you to be un a uniformed. You you know that when you you were in paradise, 
pagan pagans. You were in you were inside and said and led a shade to idols that could not speak. Therefore I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God in the sense, let Jesus be cursed, and uh, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but the same God. But it is the same God who activates all of them. In everyone. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for them in common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of common good. To one who is given through the Spirit of utterance of wisdom. And to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the in prophecy according to the same spirit and to another faith by the same spirit to give gifts of healing by the one spirit to another the working of miracles of in working of miracles to another prophecy to another in the and to another the discernment of spirits to another various kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by the one and the same spirit who allots a, a each one individually just as the spirit chooses or the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is from the second chapter of John beginning with the first verse. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding and when the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each one holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled each of them to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it out. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, they did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called to the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and the disciples believed in him. I um, like to think of myself as a relaxed and flexible guy. You know, when things change, I'm like, well, that's not that big of a deal. You know, for instance, instead of being in front of church with everybody here, there are um, four of us today, and it's just me preaching. And the part of me wants to acknowledge that I can roll with it, and I don't have any patterns, and I don't think about those kind of things. But I realized, while we were on vacation, um, that I have a very set pattern that I like to go through every morning. I want to get up, I want to put my headphones on, I want to drink my coffee, I want to play my guitar, and I want to be left alone for at least 45 minutes. Um, when you're in maybe 80 square feet and all of you are together and it's raining and cold outside, there's always something broke. There's always something that needs to be taken outside. There's always something that needs to be purchased on the Xbox store. There is always something that has to happen right now. And God loved Micah, but he looked at me and he said, you know, um, you are really being a grouch right now. And I'm like, I am not being a grouch. I'm the kind, the easygoing one. He's like, you may be the kind, easygoing one, but not at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, you know, that's true. Because I, I like it when the kids leave. 
I like it when it's just me and the dog and the ball and the coffee and I can throw the ball and no one really needs a lot from me and I can think about my day. When we're all crowded into one place, it is not the same thing. And I started thinking about how little it takes in life to get me knocked off of my tempo. Like how little it takes in life for me to be less than what I could be just because something has happened. You know, every time we turn around, it's something else. It's a pandemic. It's a snowstorm. It's uh, whatever it is. It's enough to make us feel just a little unsettled. And I got a lot of hope this week as I was locked in the trailer dealing with quarantine reading this verse. Because it's clear that Jesus had a plan to begin his public ministry. If I was going to draw it out like it goes in most of the Bible, it would be um, raised to adulthood, baptism, calls disciples, preaches in um, both the Israelite parts and the Samaritan parts, goes to Jerusalem, confronts the high priests and the Roman leaders, is crucified, dies, rises. Everything makes sense. But here, Jesus is at a party, and his mom says, Jesus, we're out of wine, buddy. Can, can you do something about that? And Jesus is thrown off of his game. Jesus says, woman, and first of all, no one, if you're listening on the Cyberland and Tyler over here, do not call your mom woman. It is not a good thing. Um, <laughs> my time has not yet come. Um, he doesn't want to do this. This is not the plan that he had in mind. This is not the plan where everything is laid out, where everything makes sense. But instead, she's like, come on, Jesus, you can do this. Just, just give us some wine. It'll be good for the party. Everything will be fine. And I have always scratched my head when I read this text and it hadn't made any sense because... I've realized every other time I've had it, things have pretty much gone my way. And now, don't get me wrong, I don't think I get everything I want. I don't think that I get everything, all decisions made the way I want. But at the same time, things have gone in a pretty logical order. I went to school, I got married, I went to seminary, I became a pastor. Everything seems to have gone the way it makes sense. And here Mary says, take it out of order, start your ministry, and start your ministry by opening a party service. Jesus does it. And what I have come to see is so powerful about this is even when our timing and even when our plans and even when everything we have hoped for is thrown out of whack, that God is still present and miracles still happen. Even if they're not the miracles we expect. And I don't know how many times I've read this, but this is the first time that I realized Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana and Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Because of this miracle, people saw who Jesus was, saw a glimpse of what the kingdom of God could be, and believed in what he was doing. Now, I am preaching this sermon in advance of what is probably most certainly going to be a major disruption to at least some people's life. Thankfully, we're in South Carolina where the weather isn't too bad. But north of us, my father-in-law is trying to make sure the roof of his barn doesn't fall from too much snow this weekend. Even north of that, you know, people are worried about what it means to be without power for days. And all of us can probably remember last winter or the winter before when Texas got hit with those bursting um, water pipes and everything ground to a halt. What this text reminds me is that in the middle of all that, we call on God and God answers. When these things happen, even if they are not part of this plan, God is present and God's love continues to shine through. I hope you all, all are safe wherever you are watching. I pray that you are warm and I hope to see you next week if you are here in Stony.
One of the earliest statements of faith was the Apostles' Creed, which now we confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your Spirit, activate within your church the gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate your surprising miracles. Your creation reflects your generosity. Blessed farmers and all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources from destruction that all can eat, drink, and be satisfied. By your Spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at every level. Direct policymakers towards compassion decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving common good. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for all those in need this day especially those on our prayer list, those in hospitals, nursing homes, and homebound, and those needs which you only know. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty or seeking shelter and for all who seek peace. You see us for who we are and you delight in it. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. You bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone on before us. And since we have such a great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these in all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We pray together the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. The Lord Jesus prayed for the unity of his disciples, and we look for the day when the church will shine forth in unity at his holy supper. The God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and evermore. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. 